So not only would you be getting paid 800000 a year, in another 10 years, you can pull out another $5 million while still getting paid 800000 a year. Bruh. Y'all listen. Yo, cracking the code to wealth. Listen, I've been telling y'all, look, this money thing ain't as hard as you think. You only don't know what you don't know. You feel me? So the reason why you ain't got a million dollars right now is because you don't know certain stuff. And that's a fact. Or it could be because you lazy and you just don't really do much. You got ideas, but you ain't really doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? But most of the time, you just didn't know. You feel me? So on this journey, y'all already know. I didn't I didn't make millions of dollars now uh, over the course of three years. It feels good, right? But now I'm learning so much that I did not know, right? That could have made me freaking quadruple what I've already made. You feel me? And now I just want to give y'all the game, right? I already gave you some game before. Uh, when it came to the life insurance, and we will talk about that. Uh, but, I mean, it's so much. And I'm looking at my phone right now because y'all know I'm a note taker. You feel me? I take notes on podcasts. I take notes when I'm listening to people. And I write them down, right, in my mentor section as I look at all these notes, bro. Look at all of I mean, it's thousands of notes. Like, we could just keep going, y'all. I take a lot of notes, right? And that's one of the things that separates me from a lot of people. I'ma tell you right now, take notes. God always speaks to me through videos, right? And I was telling my group this, my core group on a Mindset Monday call that we had. So if it's something that I'm praying about or it's something that I want, um, I'll ask God about it in prayer. I'll re refresh my YouTube feed and lo and behold, a video will be right there. You know what I'm saying? It's just the craziest thing and it always just pops out to me. And I'm like, I wanna, let me go check this video out. And then it'd be something exactly what I was praying for in the video, right? So I was talking to the Lord about like ways to make more money, right? Even more than what I already got. And the reason why I told him that is because I said, I want to be able to help be a blessing to so many people, right? I want to be able to, if, if, if there's a church out there that, that, that's just trying to get started and they need a building, I want to be able to have enough money to go buy the building. You know what I'm saying? I want to have enough money to where if there's a natural disaster on this earth and there's people in different countries or there's people in different you know, parts of the United States that just need help. I want to be able to be one of them people and my family to go in there and just clean house and fund everything and get things taken care of. Like I need, I want that kind of money and right now I don't. And so I'm, I'm more so thinking further, you know, for other people than for myself, because I understand what I got now is for me. You know what I'm saying? But the rest of it after this is going to be for everybody else. So I want to be like a huge blessing to this earth. So I came across this video by this guy named Pace Morby. Now, I've been watching Pace Morby for a long time when it comes to real estate and stuff like that, right? Yeah, I know I talked about real estate before, but I myself haven't physically just gotten into real estate how I should have just because I felt like the money was too slow, right, uh, at the time. You know, just not knowing enough. Uh, just feeling like the money was too slow. I was so used to making money in the markets and quick, fast money that I was never really looking at long term because honestly, I know I'll be on my Jesus is coming back tip and I'm like, ah, we ain't going to be here that long. No way. So just being ignorant about stuff, keeping it 100 with y'all. And I'm like, I, ain't, I need my money right now. So, you know, the Lord been dealing with me on that kind of stuff and to plan ahead and, you know, things like that. And, you know, the scripture always comes up that a, a wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. And, you know, you just never know how long you're going to be here. So I'm like, OK, so, I, you know, I'm praying about stuff like, Lord, I need this amount of money. You know, I want to be able to do this, this, that and the third in the earth. Right. And so this video popped up and he was talking about, like, you know, the best way to build like long term wealth, which is crazy because I just got done praying about that. Right. I said two figures in the video. I said five million. I mean, I said in my prayer, I said five million, ten million dollars. Right. Uh, upwards to the ten million part. Because, you know, that's just, I feel like at 10 million, I could do exactly what I need to do and still live a great life as well. You know what I'm saying? In this video, he was talking about how just because a house doesn't have as much cash flow monthly doesn't mean it's not a good deal. And I'm going to tell you why that's funny to me, because that's the reason why I didn't really get into real estate. Me and my wife is because we was like, the money monthly don't really be that much. Because, see, you know, we trade. So it's like we can make. $300 in like two minutes, you know what I'm saying? Or $500 in like two minutes. And you telling me in real estate, when I, when I buy a house, when I buy a property, that I'm only getting back, you know, two or $300 a month, $500 a month, a month, bro. I'm like, that's slow. And I got to deal with the tenants. So I'm like, I don't want to really do that right now. Maybe later, you know, and stuff like that, right? 
So it gets better, you know what I'm saying? So then he was talking about always looking at appreciation and the equity that you can pull out the house. Now, if I'm speaking foreign to you and you really don't know nothing about home ownership, uh, the reason why it's best to own a home instead of renting a home uh, is because of what we call equity. So whenever you, if you rent a house or apartment or whatever, whenever you're paying your monthly bill, your monthly rent, that's going to the person that owns that property and you're making them richer in the, in the case. So right now I'm in a rent house. My house is down the street that we're selling because we're getting ready to try to move to Houston. If you didn't know that, you know now. Uh, so this house that we're renting, whenever we pay rent to the landlord, right, he's getting richer in a sense, right? And when we're paying our mortgage, that money is going towards uh, paying the house down and it's building what we call equity in the house, right? So every payment that we pay at our house that we own down the street, right? Every payment that we pay is building up equity. So it's basically building up a big pot of money that you can then pull out your house as a loan or a line of credit later on, right? So for instance, if we pay our house down 300,000 over the course of a couple of years, then we can go to the bank and say, hey, we want to open up a line of credit for 300,000 because that's, that's how much we pay down on our house. And then they'll give us a line of credit. Instead of looking at that monthly cash flow, he's going into the deals looking at appreciation and equity. And so when, what a deal that somebody would say no to that they're only getting a hundred dollars in, in monthly cash flow, they'll turn that down and say, that's not enough money. He goes in and say, okay, I'm looking at the comps in the neighborhood. These houses are worth this much. And in five years, five to 10 years, right? They'll be worth this. So he's going in with the future mindset saying, okay, well, these will appreciate over time. You know, there, there's different businesses getting built around here, another school or whatever, a park. So the house will appraise, meaning it'll be worth more than what it is right now. So I'm not gonna look at the monthly income that it's bringing in. I'm gonna look at the appreciation that it's gonna have and the equity that it'll have later on, right? So then he said, if the average person owned five properties, which is so funny, cause let me show y'all something. Right here on my goal list, I had real estate properties, five real estate properties is one of my goals. And I wrote that before I knew anything about anything, right? So he said, if the average person, the average person, me and you, regular people, right? Uh, own five properties, you will be set for life at around a million dollars or above depending on the property because of a appreciation and equity. Now I'm explaining how this is possible, right? So if you buy real estate, you buy some single families, multifamilies, whatever you want to buy, right? Those houses over time will appreciate. He looked at like a hundred year average and appreciation rates and all that stuff. So he was looking past, you know, a hundred years ago versus now, like how houses have increased. So your grandmother's house with, that she might have bought for you know thirty forty thousand is now worth three four hundred thousand today. You see what I'm saying? And and it just continues to go up and go up. So if the average person, me and you, owned at least five properties, right? We would have over the course of you know five to ten years. He said five years. If you hold for five years, uh, you would have you would basically be a millionaire, right? Because of appreciation and equity. So if all five of those properties have been paid, they're, pay, they're getting paid on, they're not paid off, but they're getting paid on by the tenant that you moved in, that they're now paying rent to you, right? The tenant that's moved in there, they're paying that mortgage down every single month. And in five years, you will have enough equity in those houses, or you should, to at least have around a million dollars that you can pull out, right? And then the dopest thing about that is, Another five to 10 years uh, later, you could do the same thing again. So you can just continue watch, rinse, repeat. But <clears throat> he said, if you want $10 million, and this is so funny, because like I said, I told you I prayed about five to 10 million, right? Um, if you want 10 million or more, you will need at least 50 properties that you hold for five years and let them appreciate. And then you pull the equity out, right? So the same thing, if you, if you, you know, got 50 properties over time, Right now, that might not be done in a year. And I told y'all, I know we microwave popcorn generation. You like, oh, that's gonna take forever. Now you just over time. If you really think about your life and how long it took you to do certain things, like you went from kindergarten to, to 12th grade and then to college, and how many years was that? You know what I'm saying? But it passed anyway, right? So you might as well get in this line and get it popping, right? So imagine you got all, you got 50 properties, you got renters that, that's renting from you, 
right? They're paying that mortgage down. So every time they're paying that, that rent payment to you, that's paying that mortgage down. And then you building up all these equities and all these properties. And then you go to the bank and you do a, a HELOC, which is a home equity line of credit or whatever, cash out refinance, however you want to do it. And you pull all that, all that equity out that house and you put all that equity in your pocket. And then 10 years later, you can go do the same thing again. And another 10 years, do the same, or five years, do the same thing again. And constantly just keep cashing that money out. Boop, boop, boop. And of course, you got to set money to the side to, you know, have repairs on the houses and stuff when they call. But again, if you don't, if you don't want to be that person to, um, to do it, like you can have a property management team and stuff like that. But essentially, this is where the wealth is built, right? In the equity and appreciation, not in per se, the monthly cash flow, that, I mean, the monthly income that they're paying you every month. So this is what got me going. I was like, dang, because first I was looking at it all wrong. Like, oh, man, we only going to make $300 a month off of that house. That's trash. I mean, I'm, I'm paying $50,000 to buy this house to only make $300 a month. And I wasn't really looking at the bigger picture. And so now I'm starting to see the bigger picture and it's over. You see what I'm saying? The Lord just really revealed that to me. And it's so crazy because my brother's in real estate. Uh, my older brother is really, in real, he's been doing this forever, but I just couldn't get past the monthly income. So, but now I'm, I'm starting to see it. Then he gave this example of a guy that he was talking to in this particular video. And he said, the guy is 37 years old right now. And in 10 years, he will be 47, right? And he said, if you have 20 properties, that'll be $5 million net worth. If you own 20 properties and held them for five years, you have at least $5 million of net worth. And so this is how people's net worth are calculated. That's why they tell you a lot of rich people are not rich in money. They're rich in assets because they own a lot of property and all the equity in that property is what they're basing their net worth off of. Right. So this is why you see people with billions of dollars, but they don't have billions of dollars in the bank. They're billions of dollars in assets, you know, that accumulative, the equity accumulative is uh, what makes their net worth so big. Right. So he was saying the guy that's 37 in 10 years, he'll be 47, which if he had 10 prop, I mean, 20 properties by then, he'll have five million dollar net worth. Right. And he was telling him he can actually do that way faster than 10 years because the lady that was sitting in the uh, on the side in the video says she's only doing real estate part time and she already got 20 properties. And she did that within the course of like, I think, two years or something like that. Uh, but he was saying, what, what could he do with the money when he gets that five million from the properties? He said he can do one of three things. He can refinance the house and pull the cash out, right? Or he could do a HELOC, which is a home equity line of credit, up to $5 million. Or he can use the, the $5 million to put into a whole life insurance policy. Didn't we just talk about that recently? Come on, man. He could use the $5 million to put into a whole life insurance policy that grows tax-free at 5%. Then borrow from himself to do bigger deals or spend on himself or use it to become the bank and lend to other people at 16 percent interest, which is eight hundred thousand a year for the rest of his life. So if he lent, if he if he if he listen, I'm so excited. y'all. If he took out the five million and put that five million into a whole life insurance policy, like I was explaining to y'all. Right. And then he became a hard money lender or lend that five million to a big uh, real estate guru to buy a skyscraper or to buy an apartment complex. Right. If he lent that money to them, he could charge them 16 percent interest if he wanted to. Right. And then that would bring him eight hundred thousand dollars a year for the rest of his life. That's crazy because you got to think um, you got to think that real estate ain't going nowhere. These buildings and. All that stuff been here since your grandparents been here. You know what I'm saying? Most of the skyscrapers downtown that you see and houses and buildings been there for freaking ever. So you got to think if somebody's, you know, in that development stage where they build, they either building or they're buying skyscrapers or apartment complexes, that's going to be here 100 years from now for the most part. You know what I'm saying? So your money is going to be safe in that asset particularly. You know what I'm saying? And so you got to think every year, there, that person that borrowed that money from you will be paying you back eight hundred thousand a year for the rest of your life, as long as that that loan. I mean, you know what I'm saying? As long as that building is in place until they pay that off, and then you get all your money back plus the interest that they've been paying you. Craziest thing ever, right? So now I'm seeing the bigger picture. All right. Then he said the bright side to all of this 
is that you will still have the 20 properties that are cash flowing every single month. So not only are you getting that interest, that interest back, but you still got the same properties that are still paying you a cash flow every month from people paying rent, right? It's crazy, all right? So he said you still have the 20 properties that are cash flowing every month that are being paid down by your tenants, or you could sell for a big profit if you wanted to, you could sell your portfolio, but that's stupid because, this is what he said, it's stupid because, in 10 years, you can refinance and pull that five million out again. Again, y'all. So not only would you be getting paid 800,000 a year, in another 10 years, you could pull out another five million while still getting paid 800,000 a year. Y'all listen, this real estate thing, deep. And that life insurance policy, deeper. I highly recommend get this book right here. What would the Rockefellers do? If you don't know who this family is, I know for all my uh, conspiracy theories, they on the Illuminati. It is, it is, it definitely is. But this was a smart family when it came to wealth. Uh, they use life insurance policies and you will see how. This right here, boy, listen, I'm about 40 pages in and my mind is blown. You hear me? So you might want to, you might want to get that. All right, so this is some real wealth talk, y'all. And I, as I'm learning, I love to, to teach as I'm learning. So when I start doing it, you can be like, dang, bro, did you say that? You know what I'm saying? I already told y'all about life insurance a long time ago, like two, three years ago. I started doing it this year, and I'm already, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, last year. I started doing it last year. But, yeah. So, then, you know, he goes on to say, you know, um, well, this is what I was thinking in my head. He didn't say this part. It makes sense that he's able to afford that 13,000 square foot house with no issues because all of the money that's coming in. You see what I'm saying? But then the guy, Pace Morby, the guy that uh, is actually his video, he was talking about his goal isn't $5 million, though. His is $250 million, right? And now listen to this. He said, when I have $250 million, I will donate all of my houses to charity. The cash flow from the properties will run the charity stuff. Right. So all the cash flow from all his properties will run the charity. Right. Once he give all his properties to that. Uh, but the two hundred and fifty thousand will compound at 16 percent interest. His family will be set for like seven generations. Listen, seven generations. That's that. A wise man leaves wealth, you know, an inheritance for his children's children. That, that's the scripture that pops on my head, which is this is what the Lord. This is what I got all, all this video that, that popped up at the top of my news feed after I got done praying. That's the craziest part. Right. Uh, he said he's 40 years old now uh, with thirty five million dollars in real estate. So Pace Morby right now is 40 years old. He has like around thirty five, probably thirty six million dollars in real estate right now. He's trying to get to two hundred and fifty million. He said he will get there by fifty two years old. So he said he got some more time to get some more things done. But then he said, now that's a retirement plan. That's a real life retirement plan, y'all. And so all of this stem from me talking to God and put my phone up. All this stem from me talking to God and asking him, Lord, like, I need this kind of money. How can I get it done? And then he, re he revealed this to me. Come on, man. Can't tell me Jesus ain't real, bro. You can't tell me. He do this to me all the time, y'all. And it's so crazy because I watched another, uh, like, probably like, it was last year sometime. This dude named Ben Mala, I think that's how you say his name, but he like worth 250 million, which is so funny that uh, Pace Morby's goal is 250 million, but the guy is actually worth 250 million in real estate. And he said the exact same thing in a video. It was in a YouTube short, never forget. And I saved it. But he said, real estate is probably the most common way people have achieved wealth. I never made money on a sale. The actual physical liquid money always came from a refinance. I bought hotels for 18, 20 million bucks, buy the property, refinance the property, and then take that money, put it in my pocket. Then let's it appreciate over time, right? Build up that equity, right? The people in there who rent spaces, all they all paying it down, right? And then he goes to the bank and does the same thing. He was saying, people wonder how I'm getting so rich. It's because I'm just buying these properties, letting the equity build up, and then pulling the equity out. So then he can go and, and get a, a pull the equity out of $10 million and put it right in his bank account. You know what I'm saying? And then over time, the people that's renting from him or whatever is going to pay it down again over the next 10 years, 5, 10 years. And he goes back and does it again. Pull out another $10 million. Come on, man. This is, God is good, man. Listen, I'm telling y'all. So I'm telling y'all that before, you know, I get started in this full-on real estate journey. 
And uh, as I'm continuously growing in real estate and this whole life insurance policy stuff, y'all listen, we're going to the next level. Something I heard from one of my friends who hang around some wealthy folks is, y'all ever heard the, the philosophy of, of buy, borrow, die? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Buy, borrow, or die. Buy a whole bunch of assets. Keep keep the, the, the debt on them low mm -hmm. at, in the beginning. But then when you get older, pull all the equity out of everything. Mm. Live off of that, that tax-free money. Yeah. Then have a whole bunch of life insurance policies. When so you pass, like the, oh. the insurance pays yeah, off all the stuff. Is. And you pass all the assets down to your kids debt-free. Wow. But, but you've lived the second half of your life off your money, off, off of your assets, tax free. Yeah. Hey, that's a hey. <laughs> that was the <a> joke. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke.